Welcome back to Dragon Con. We've got Trina Keating. Trina, thank you for hey. so much. This is your first time at Dragon Con. Yes, yes. thank you for having me. It's so great. No, no pressure, but uh, we, we waited <laughs> for you and now we're here. So. <laughs> When I arrived last night, I was uh, uh, blown away. I was I, I couldn't believe the amount of people, and uh, it was such a. And that was last night. That was Thursday. Yeah. You haven't seen anything yet. No. Yeah, if you thought that was a lot of people. At about 11:45, I went to bed, and then at midnight, I think it officially starts at midnight. Is well, that correct? It officially starts today, but people are. Uh, we do the big countdown. Like so we, we're up in the, pa the the loft and we're yelling. Yeah. Yes. So all of a sudden, the noise in my hotel room just like skyrocketed, and I uh, and I got up out of bed. And I went to my husband and I said, something's wrong. Something's <laughs> happening. And he's like, I think that it's just that people it's are saying it's fun. starting. <laughs> yeah, we do I a thought somebody had countdown. like jumped from the 30th floor. I would hope not. But no. if they do, <laughs> let's not do that. So yeah. It was a happy noise. I, I, I love that you immediately went to the something's wrong mentality. Yeah. <laughs> Like, a, like, a, like, oh gosh, so... What's going on? So I, I'm afraid to know what kind of terrible history has led you believe to like, oh my God, everything's on fire. <laughs> Goodness, well this could be your first show and you're pretty new to the, to the, the fan conventions as a whole, right? I am, so I did uh, Fan Expo in Toronto yeah. last year and uh, that was the first time I, I've experienced the convention world. The convention so world, yeah. I, as they say on Twitter, I'm a convention virgin. Problem yes. solved here. And I so, said yeah. I did Fan Expo, but I didn't go all the way. So well, wait, well, I, I'm Bond's not sure if this is technically the all the way, but we're definitely gonna <laughs> push you in that direction. That sounded terrible now in retrospect. Yes. Strike that. No, that's, that's what she said for Stephanie. Yes. Yeah. She, I think she's around here somewhere. She is, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um, well, many panels. You guys have a lot of panels. You have a lot of fan support for Defiance, which just wrapped up its third season. We so do. Let's hope we get season four. They announced everyone else. You guys have to be soon. So yes. you guys had a really cool time on that show. And uh, for those who may not recognize or out of makeup, you have the most prosthetics on that show. I think of any main character. You know, like yeah. Tony goes through a lot of, of, of just general makeup, and you, you're like very prosthetic heavy. What's your experience like that? Have you, have you ever had to do that for a gig before? No. And uh, when I first got the audition, they sent a little attachment of what the character was going to look like, oh. and I couldn't open the attachment. So I thought, oh, I'll just no go to the deal. audition. Yeah, it's so, just a sci-fi show. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I went to the audition, and then I got a call back, and I was like, maybe I should open up that attachment and like see what this character is really all right. about. And I opened it up, and I was like, oh. And I said to my husband, who's done prosthetic work before, I was like, I don't know, like I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'll like it. And he's like, Oh, it's nothing. It's easy. <laughs> it's no, no problem. And so, you know, fast forward, I yeah. got the part. And then the very first day that we camera tested, huh. I was in the chair for five hours. And That's a pretty extensive time. Yeah. And all I could think was the whole time I was in it was like, I can't do this. Yeah. I, I can't do this. How am I it, ever going to do it's full, it's full of head makeup for you. It's a, just a whole cow oh, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I panicked. I really panicked. Yeah, yeah. Cause, because we were going to camera like two days later. I was like, well, I can't quit now. Like, like You're already committed to I'm it. I'm committed. Um, and yeah. of course, it, it got easier and I got used to right. it. But uh, <laughs> I was a little terrified. I would understand. I mean, to, to, to come from being free face to living in this. Because I mean, I would imagine like your prosthetic is mostly from the chest up because it's that. Yeah, it comes to just like Yeah, so, but it, it's enough to like envelop you and just make you feel like, like I don't know, like smothering at times. Yes, it's, it, you, you do have to kind of practice um, some deep breathing exercises yeah, yeah. And, and sort of, uh, Tony Curran's done lots of prosthetic work. Yeah. We talk about prosthetic depression and uh, uh, it, it can be a very real thing at times. All right. Um, I, I, I've never really considered like post prosthetic depression a thing. <laughs> But I guess it's like when you're wearing it for so long and you have that second or third skin depending on what you've got. Well, you can't smile in it. So when you think of like not smiling for like 16 hours a day, that that can make you go a little bit squirrely well, at I mean, times. It helps, I guess, with your character. She's kind of like, you know, the, the, the tough, you know, smart right. ally kind of deal. So that, it, it that's works. the wise cracking. But uh, you as a person, yeah, I can understand that would try me a little batty at yeah, times. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a strange adjustment the first, you know, few weeks of shooting. Yeah. but. I actually have to say the OMAC this year have it just as hard. They're oh, not really? in prosthetics, but they are just oh, this is full body paint. And full everything body on that. paint, yeah. and they're they're screwed into their costumes. Really, they can't like go to the washroom without somebody like coming and unscrewing them all. All right, who's, who's my washcloth? Yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have. For me, I spend a lot of time. 
I'm in the chair in the morning, but once I'm finished getting made up, you're, you I'm get, good you're pretty for the free. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas the OMEC, they have like people around them 24 seven when they're when they're shooting because it's just so much. I mean, those are some pretty intense costumes on top of the body paint, but like the armor and things they had. Yeah, I never really considered that. And, I don't know, that, that's a different degree of uncomfortable I don't think I've ever really considered before. I think we all have our things in our show. Yeah. I mean, we all love our characters, so yeah. it's, you know, it's it's worth the pain. And I say, yeah, well, I get to do a job that I love and I get to play a great character, so. And you, you, had, your, you had your husband this season, right? Sorry? Your husband was there yes, this season my for, husband was for his, his cameo-esque and then uh, completely, it was like classic boo-boo. Here's this cool looking character and he's gone. I know, so. but you know, I kept saying, to him being dead, but we didn't really see but she him. She never saw dead. the body. Yeah, we've just seen like, Game of Thrones. Just you know how like this goes. BB, uh, played by Billy McClellan. Both, oh, yeah. both, all the, my husband and Billy. You know, Billy's a good friend of ours. And I'm like, well, we didn't actually see you dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned you did lots of other prosthetic work, though. So, like, well, what was the one tip that you felt like you learned from his experience? Like, you can give to people if you're going to wear a prosthetic. What's the one thing you would recommend to? Um, when you go to get your head mold done, uh, take somebody to hold your hand. <laughs> just to have that contact, because yes. you lose all yes. everything, right? Yeah, because when the eyes and the mouth got covered, I freaked right out. I started like uh, grabbing, and uh, and the prosthetics guys didn't know me at that point, and oh, they wow. were like, "You're okay. You're okay. We're here. We're here. Yeah, it's we're, all right." And you know, but um, if I. I I always say they better never lose my mold for my head because I'm you don't want never to get that doing that again. again. Yeah. Uh, but if somebody has to do it, take someone to hold your hand. That's fair. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Now you, now you and your husband are, are kind of geeks in your own right. What kind of geeky things do you guys get into? I mean, you're, you're going to be coming to the convention. you got a little work to do. But if you guys aren't working, what what's the schedule? For me, it's board games. Yes. I, I, my husband and I love board games. Um, we, yeah. We play board games pretty much every night after dinner. Beautiful. Uh, and my husband likes D and D as okay. well. So this so is you're this a world tabletop is, haven. This is it right yes, here. That he, he's pretty excited about all. All of right, this. so we won't tell him that there's 24-hour board gaming just yet, but yes. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, That'll we're be, expecting to. Uh, he brought an empty suitcase, so. You know what? I I, I have lots of admiration for that because it's, that because you have to fly back. You have to, there's a whole Tetris system involved yeah. to doing that kind of stuff. So he sounds like he knows what's up. What's, I like, think so. what's, what's your board game of choice then? What's the, your, your go to family game night? Settlers is our go to. Settlers of Catan. Yeah. That's a classic. It's a huge German game for those of you who play. A lot of workers and things like that. I love the, just the original one, um, but I also love Cities and Nights. That, that um, one really elevates the game from just. Here's some basic rules to here's some very complex yeah. uh, turn based it's, it's fun. I can never convince people to play that because they're just like, that's a little heavy for me. It, well, Let's it's just go hard. Back. Yeah. yeah, because it took me about, I would say, five or six games before I kind of, before it won me over. Right. Because it is, it's hard. I'm impressed you actually gave it five. A lot of people these days, they're like, you know, two or three times I'm done. It's just not fun anymore. Like, I have a bad habit of buying like, board games like that. I don't that. like teaching it to other people. That's, that's my thing. That's the thing. Like, yeah. my husband is more willing to teach people games. I'm sort of like, oh, let's just play the one that we all know how to play. Fair, um, fair, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I like I like strategy games. Okay. Uh, like, how serious is your strategy? Well, I don't It gets better with each game. We just started playing this uh, game called 8 Minute Legends. Okay. And uh, there's a certain level of strategy involved with that mm. one, and, and I'm... The more I understand it, it's the more I like it. It's very layered in that kind of development. I don't understand why it's called Eight Minute Legend, though, because there's no way you can play it in eight minutes. What's your average play time? Like oh, two hours? No, no, no. No, it's quick, but I'd say 15, 20 minutes per okay. game. All right, that's not too bad, then. Maybe you if I got really good, I could, thing. yeah. It might be fun. Well, maybe we'll see you guys down there rocking out some games this weekend. Maybe. So let's find out. I want to thank you for your first time. Before you go, fan questions yes. here, asking for a friend. A lot of you already know the routine by now. You got two here. Uh -oh. You need to pick a color. Do you want yellow or orange? That one. That one. All right. Orange is a popular color. I guess it's more of a theoretical question. Some of these are jokey, I admit, so we might. Why can you not buy an entire chess set in a pawn shop? If they just sell the pawns, it's kind of a board gaming question. Can you buy an entire chess set in a pawn shop? Is this a riddle? That's what I'm concerned about here. Why can you not buy an entire? I think entire... there's like a hidden sphinx in here. I'm not really sure. Chess game in a pawn shop. Can you buy one? 
If they only sell because, pawns. Yes, if they have to something to do with pawning it. Okay. Maybe something, not a huge one. Yeah. Let's, let's do that know. yellow one real quick. Okay, then. do the yellow one. All right, do the yellow one. That was our backup. We always do backup. It's going to be really embarrassing if this You know what? This too. is going to be the best question I think I've ever had to read aloud. And I hope you're ready for this. Would you rather, and this is appropriate doing prosthetic work now, would you rather look like Jar Jar Binks or talk like Jar Jar oh Binks? But this one you're stuck with. Have like to look Jar -Jar like Jar Jar Binks. Then have the, because, the Misa so annoying speech pattern. Yeah. Okay. Because regardless of what people look like, you can convince people that you're cool by the way you talk. Mm -hmm. But okay. if you talk like Jar Jar Binks, it's pretty hard to convince people. You have, you have this amazing looking person with an amazing costume. It could be just spectacular. Then there's the Jar Jar voice. And you're like, wow, that. Wow. All right, that doesn't me. match. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, Jenna. And thank I hope you. you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dragon